Okay, we're going to talk about consumer applications, mobile music, and wireless gaming. When developers look at the wireless environment, one of the things they see, or should see, is there's 950 million PCs in use at the end of 2006, 2.9 billion phones. The proximity for PCs is virtual, and the proximity for wireless phones is, is true, so there's there's some opportunity there. Integration, applications integrated, considered fundamental to the design of a phone or, or a product. And access is anywhere, anytime for a consumer on a phone versus a PC. We have by 2009 mobile application platform growth upwards of $1.5 billion. That may or may not happen. I think it will, and I think it could be bigger than that. Mobile advertising projected to be a billion dollars, and again, it could be more. But here's part of the problem. 76% of the people that were surveyed in this survey said they don't bother to use data services because it's too much work. It's too hard. It's too hard to get to. We were talking earlier at lunch about a company called Phone.com that invented the WAP browser, and one of the founders of that company was a guy named Chuck Parrish. And Chuck said early on in WAP, for every click additional down a menu, you lose 50% of the viewing audience. So the first click, the second click, the third click, the fourth click. And we still haven't learned that lesson. We still make it too difficult. Okay. Now, as far as applications, SMS text is still going to be king. If you look at the numbers in Europe, you look at the numbers, the, the n revenue number you saw in the Philippines is because of text. The, if you, I forget the numbers, I, I quit counting, but there used to be a monthly total of SMS messages in the UK, and it's in the billions. It is a huge source of revenue, and it's getting to be more here. Multimedia services has really been a disappointment it's been off to a slow start. It's stagnated. The networks are trying to breathe new life into it. But the real problem is you can SMS from any network to any network. MMS doesn't work that way. MMS is really hard. There was an article last week about how do you get the pictures off your phones. Well, MMS is meant to make that easy, was meant to make it easy. It was meant to be take a picture, click a button, send it off. There was a company. Uh, that was founded by Philippe Kahn called LightSurf that had this all solved, that had it down. Um, they were bought by VeriSign, and I don't know what's going on with the technology, but Sprint had it. You could very easily take a picture and send it to somebody. You could send it up to an album or whatever, but nobody has carried it forward, so it's really not making money. We happen to think that instant messaging is going to be the next big thing. And it's both for business and for consumer. But if you look at the typical teenager today, and I don't have any teenagers at home, but I have some friends who do, they go home after school and they open eight, nine, or 10 IM windows in different IM programs. And they spend the rest of the afternoon IMing everybody. Right? And there are, some, there, there are some moves to bring IM down to the phones and extend the desktop. Remember that wireless is about extending your experience from a fixed point to a mobile point. So we think there's a good opportunity there. Um, but when the revenues start falling off, as Jim was talking about, when the ARPU starts coming down, when all of this starts happening to the network operators, you know, what replaces these services? What's going to take the place of them? Ringback tones and games, well, you know what? After nine quarters of growth, uh, the demand is flattened. Part of that is not due to the demand flattening. Part of it's due to there are too many ringtones and ringback tones and everything else out there, and it's too hard to find them. People can't find them. The network operators are all starting to get smarter. They're all starting to group things. So if you get a ringtone from the Beatles from Verizon now, it will automatically at the bottom say you can download music from the Beatles, you can download an album cover, you can download wallpaper, and they kind of bring all the services together. But it's still too hard to find. 
And there are too many both on and off deck options for people to find the software they want. I've been looking for a uh, expense program for my BlackBerry. And if you type in Google BlackBerry expense report, you get 10,000 hits. And of those, about 1,500 of them are programs, all written for the BlackBerry. But the problem with them, and I'll get into this more later, is that right now you have to download them on your BlackBerry and try them. That doesn't make any sense. So the network operators are looking at how do they get the content market moving again? How do they take this stagnant market and make it grow again? They're doing a lot of work on search engines. They're doing voice search and data access. They're grouping things together. They're doing new types of ringtones. There's a company I met with a couple weeks ago where you can create your own ringtones from your own songs. The games are getting better. The multiplayer games are getting more interactive and interesting, and location-based services are playing a part in that. So the network operators understand they have an issue, and they understand that they need to make this um, better. So the goal of the operator in all of this is to gain new income source from consumer applications and drive adoption of 3G networks and devices. Think about being the CTO of a major wireless network, and you go to your board of directors and say, I need $6 billion to build a 3G network, because if I build it, I'm going to sell lots of data. And then you build it, and for the first one year, one and a half years, you're after corporate business, and that doesn't materialize, so you go after the consumer business, and here it is four years later, and your data ARPU is 14%. You know, you've got to figure out how am I going to get people to leave the world of GSM and go to the world of UMTS? How am I going to get them off 1X and get them to EVDO Rev A? And the only way is to give them applications they have to have, they want to have, and they really need. That means finding the next big wave. Is it music downloads? We're trying that. It's working. TV and video streaming and downloads, we'll see what happens. There's some capacity issues. There's some off-network things that we're going to talk about later. But the bottom line is streaming video on a 3G network is not something a lot of network operators want to do a lot of because there's capacity problems. Location-based services are going to be big, and I'm going to talk about that, and then voice messaging also. The internet as a resource. The network operators teaming up with hot internet sites. You know, it normally took a network operator three years to understand what was going on on the internet. And by then, the fad had already changed. So they're getting smarter. And it started with the NVNOs teaming up with MySpace and Facebook and YouTube and things like that. But now, Verizon and AT&T are not sitting around for three years saying, I wonder what's going to happen. They're out there looking at what's going on, and they're embracing these companies and bringing them on board. So there's a sudden new understanding that consumer-created content, peer-to-peer, -peer, and consumer-created content is going to be a big deal moving forward, and they're trying to figure out how they can capture their piece of it. So. I've come up with an idea about how to get people to use more services, and I want to share it with you. Today what you do is you purchase a phone at a store and, or over the internet, you take it home and you spend hours learning the menu system, how to make it work, how to load content, whether you can download your address book or you have to do it over again, and then you know, you look out on the web and see what's available, or you look at the website and see what's available, and there's no standard common user face, interface with the exception of uh, Vivo in Brazil and a few others. They're, they're getting better. But every phone is different. Every application is different. What if you could buy that phone, take it home, open a website, enter your phone number, network, and phone model, bang, on the screen pops up, a picture of your phone, all of your menus, and you can go through all the menus, you can set them up, you can download your ringtones, you can download your games, 
You can look at your address book and move it around. If you want to see what applications there are, you can go over and bring them down and play with them on the phone. And when you're all done, you either side load it or over the air load it, and your phone is set up for you. It is your phone, and it operates the way you want it to operate. Now, they do this in corporations. IT managers have these kind of tools, not to this extent, but they do have these kind of tools. It doesn't take too much to move this down into a consumer application, and I think it makes a lot of sense.